So we're back with Angels with Scaly Wings. We're back on the hunt for Remy. I think we're all agreed that we are going to be dating Remy. The Akbar-like dragon. What do we call him? Drakbar. Remy Bar. Acme. Whatever. Whatever. We're going after him. He is the dragon of our dreams. Drakbar. We did go for Drakbar. Hopefully, hopefully we'll, we'll get to the end of the game today. Hopefully. And then we'll speedrun some. We'll get up a guide and we'll speedrun some other endings. Or we can go on to one of the other dating games I've got. Or we can just play something a bit different for a bit. It depends. It depends. Drakbar. The Akbar of Dragons. But yeah. Boom. Oh, well, that doesn't look good. Because I definitely saved the game. The game didn't fucking save. Why did the game not save? I saved it like 20 times. There we go. There we go. It has saved. Here we are. This is where we are. That, that really, really triggered me for a moment. Ah, oh. I was not going to be happy. I was not going to be happy. But this is definitely where we were because this is a special character you only meet from where we were. He's the guy with the ice cream. So. <sighs> right. Who are we going to go and spend some time with? Uh, Lorem, if you remember, was the reporter. Well, he was the postman who wants to be a reporter. Bryce is the um, detective. Iodine is the other that one we've kind of been romancing alongside Remy. And then this is the guy with the ice cream. So which one do you want to spend some time with? Out of those four. Thank you for the point, Sean. Ice cream? Has one vote for ice cream. I didn't the impregnate. Of course, that's what you remember. Of course, that is. I think this is the one we're pretty sure killed everyone. Well, she's just a little bit of suspect. You know, she found the first dead body. The second one was like down the road from our house. She wants to get into the secret military base for no other reason than it's a secret. <laughs> right, let's go. Let's go and see the murderer. Here we are again. Just a minute. I hope I didn't forget anything. You said something about going to the beach. Yep. You know, I'm glad he decided not to send you away after all. Me too. Oh, guess you got our entry confirmation for the stunt flying competition. Is it me? Remy did. Yes, 
but you didn't find the first dead person, and you don't live down the road from the second dead person fictional. Don't be silly, Anna. Yes, Apple did it. I've got it right here in black and white. We are happy to confirm your entry into the annual stunt flying competition. Please have your com competitor number ready and show up at the organize. Organizator's booth. Am I going mad? Is that a word? It does with context. With the context that she's been around most of the dead people. And then suddenly she wants me to steal a map for her to look at the secret base. You know, Remy wants to go to the secret base, but Remy hasn't asked us to steal a map. You know? Just pointing it out there. The good boy hasn't done that. Well, who cares about the rest? I'm in. That's great. Yeah, but the festival's pretty soon. I have to make the most of the time until then to get my skills up to par. I thought you already had years of experience. Yeah, but now I have to practice the best routine I can possibly come up with. Not to mention making sure I can execute it flawlessly when the time comes. Practicing in general is very different than practicing for an event like this one. I see. Are you ready to see some stunt flying? Sure. Let's go then. Let's go! I've seen a lot of these. I don't think I've seen a lot of these. I can't remember half of them. No, don't skip ahead. So this is where you usually practice. I practice this about anywhere, but today's a nice day for a beach visit. Water and sand are also good surfaces to practice complicated maneuvers on in case you can't make the landing. Make sense? Yeah, they're soft for when you fall out of the sky because you're a murderer and the guilt gets to you and you have a Macbeth moment in the air and you see, like, knives covered in blood. Well, don't let me hold you up. Oh, I can't just practice right now. I'm still giddy with excitement from getting that letter earlier. Besides, I wanted to hang out with you, what, you while we're here as well. Sounds good to me. Do you visit the beach often? Not really, except for practice, that is. It does make for a nice backdrop while I fly, though. I see. I say I see a lot. I see. Do you ever go to the beach? No, it's not something that's possible for me the last couple of years, but it certainly used to be something other people would do. I see. Sunny... Sunning yourself can be nice sometimes, but I'm not really a fan of going swimming. There is so much more you can do at the beach, though. Like what? You already mentioned sunning. Do you ever get a tan? I think they meant organisers. Maybe. It is a translation. This, I don't think this game was originally in English. I can't even get my mouth around it. Organisator. Organisator. I don't know. You already mentioned something. Do you have a tan? What's that? I guess that's a no then. To be fair, you are completely covered in scales, so I imagine you wouldn't be affected. Tanning is a reaction of the skin when it's exposed to sunlight. If humans stay in the sun for a while, our skin can get darker. How strange. And it gets your mouth around a lot of things. I don't get my mouth around a lot of things. That's my problem. And what's that? Well, the skin can take on a reddish tint and it can also be painful and cause dizziness. So you have to be careful not to stay in the sun for too long. Pretty much, though that isn't necessarily true for all of us. Depending on the skin tone, people can be more or less affected by the radiation. Fucking quotes. I see, that sounds kind of complicated. Does that mean we shouldn't stay here for too long? I'll just have to be careful, don't worry about it, it won't affect me much about all. I see, just let me know if I need to do anything. Sure, will do. You said you don't like swimming all that much, why is that? She's a fucking dragon, mate! Why am I an idiot? Well, as you could imagine, I prefer the air to the sea, even though we fly have quite a relationship with the water. What kind of relationship are we talking about? We use it to hunt. I hope all the dong will be clipped. 
I will be clipping the dong tomorrow, probably, Punky. Don't worry. I see, so you go fishing, but can't swim all that well. Pretty much. We could do enough to safely hunt and paddle on the surface, but that's about it. If we actually want to go swimming, it's recommended we wear a life vest. A dragon in a life vest. Is it that bad? Our wings are made for flying, not for swimming. The movements and musculature are rather different. With some training, we can learn to swim better, but it still wouldn't really be effective. I see. No, the, the quote will automatically say where it's from, Sean. Like, the bit at the end says... What quote even is that? Quote number 31. How do you do the quotes? Someone do quote 31 for Sean so he can see. <laughs> but yes, there. And besides, who would choose to learn to swim if we already have the air to ourselves? Flying's just your thing, I guess. Pretty much. You made it sound as if beaches are pretty important things for humans. I wouldn't say important, rather it's a unique way for people to spend time. It was often done as a leisure activity or a way to spend holiday vacations. That sounds pretty important to me. What else did you do at the beach? Let me think. I got an idea and started looking for something in the sand on the ground. With a bit of digging, I found a flat, smooth stone and showed it to her. Do you have any idea what I'm going to do with this? Not really. Let me show you something. I went to the edge of the water, followed closely by Iodine. Now watch this. I extended my arm with the best technique I could muster before I threw the stone towards the water. Spinning in the air, the stone bounced on the water's surface a few times before it sunk into the sea. What was that? Stone skipping. Never heard of it. No, how do you do that? I can show you. I looked around for another suitable stone and soon found one near the edge of the water. Let's start with the stone. Ideally, we want one that is a, that has a big surface area, but is as flat as possible. Got it. Hey, Punky. This one is also really smooth, which helps too. Okay, so we need smooth, flat stones. Now, the t technique is also pretty important. I'm not sure how well this will translate to your anatomy, but I'll just show you how I do it, and then we can figure out what you can do. Okay. Hold the stone like this, extend your arm and curl it like this. Then, you have to throw it in such a way that it stays relatively stable in the air, but spins as fast as you can make it. I do it like this. I threw the stone, once again showing her how it subsequently bounced a few times over the water's surface before it sunk into the sea. I'm not sure if I can do that. We'll see. Maybe we can figure something out. Let's look for a stone first. Okay. We both started looking for another appropriate stone. I saw Dean scratching around the sand with one of her feet. She crouched down to pick something up before she returned to me. Here, what about this one? That should work. See, you've already got the, that part down. Guess so? Okay, now for the technique. She was holding the stone in the claws at the edge of her wing. I tried to guide her by pulling her wing back like a wooden arm, but it could become clear to me that it lacked a lot of maneuverability an arm would have. For the throw, you'll want to move your wing forward as fast as you can, and at the very end of the extension, let go of the stone. Yeah, I might be a dumbass, but I can skip a stone easy, apparently. I'll try. I can see her moving her wing awkwardly. She pushed it forward before releasing the stone, which sunk without bouncing a single time. That didn't work. Yeah, there wasn't really enough spin on it. Let me try again. Alright. I waited a few steps into the water to retrieve the stone she'd thrown only moments ago. Here you go. I'll try something different this time. Feel free. Instead of using her wing, she took the stone into the dex de dexterous claws on one of her feet as she continued to stand on the other leg. Effortlessly, she pulled her leg back before rapidly moving it forward and releasing the stone. It flew in a bit of an upward arc before it bounced off the water's surface once and subsequently sunk into the ocean's waters. Nice! Not bad, huh? I had no idea you could do that with your leg. Actually, our legs are what we mainly use to grab things. It only gets complicated if I'm supposed to be moving at the same time, like when I'm waiting in the cafe. Interesting. As opposed to someone who's hunting while flying, that's pretty much a requirement. 
It is. Actually, if I'm at home and eating chips or something, I usually use my feet as well. That sounds kind of funny. I wish I could do that with my feet. That sounds kind of funny. It probably isn't even half as funny as you're picturing it. That was a neat trick, though. So what else can you do at the beach? I don't know. Build sandcastles? I haven't done that in, like, two decades. I tried to imagine what I deemed building a sandcastle would look like. Based on what I knew now, she probably wouldn't be using her wings. Would you believe me if I told you we used to have contests for building sandcastles back home? Really? Yeah, people would build huge detailed sculptures that would be taller than both of us, just with sand. Oh wow, that sounds hard though. You could try it if you like. Ha, <laughs> I'm not sure I have the patience for that. To me, it seems a bit of a shame to build big elaborate sculptures out of something like sand that clearly won't last. I mean, if you're going to spend so much time on it, why not create something that will stay? That's actually the point of those contests. Oh really? Yeah, people demonstrate their skill in creating the sculptures, and by using something like sand, they prove that it doesn't matter if the sculpture gets destroyed in the end, because they can do it again if they like. I see, that's pretty interesting. Actually, it's not unlike your stamp flying competition. How so? Well, during your competition, nothing lasting is created from the performance itself. It's all about the experience and memories. You have to prove that you were skilled enough to do those stunts right at that very moment just before the competition. That's a good point. I'm in the mood for a snack. Should I get something for you as well? Yes, please. Alright. You can watch me if you like. Maybe you can learn a thing or two from it. You want to teach me how to fish? Sure, since you taught me the... What was it called again? Stone skipping. Right. I, I think she means the sandcastle building contest. <laughs> Though with Punky, it wouldn't surprise me if she's like... In a completely different world. Right, since you taught me the stone skipping, I can show you how to fish. Okay. We actually have two very different ways of doing it. There's hunting and angling. Personally, I prefer hunting, though. I can see why. Let me demonstrate. She took a few steps back and started running towards the edge of the sea. Rapidly flapping her wings, she jumped into the air at the last second, taking off and flying around the area. I could see her staring at the sea intently, circling a few times before descending towards the water's surface. Calls extended. When she got close enough, her claws suddenly sank into the water, only to reappear with a fish in their grasp. Afterwards, she returned and landed near me. Did you see that? Yeah, but I think my distinct, distinct lack of wings would probably prevent me from doing the same thing. You don't have to do exactly the same thing. In the end, I'm just grabbing them right up the sea. You could do that. I'm not so sure about that. I bet it's a lot easier with your claws. The fish can be pretty slippery. I guess you have a point. Well, there's still the other method. Angling. Yep, angling. See my tail? She showed me her tail. At its end, there was a fork in it. With its distinct shape, size and colour, it reminded me a lot of a banana. A banana? Oh, it's getting kinky now. He's looking at that thinking it's a banana. A banana. My phone's about to die as well. What about it? This is the bait. She sat down near the edge of the water, letting her tail hang down into it. Banana. This can take a while sometimes, but there are techniques which can speed up the process. Yeah, like, as I said, when I was trying to explain, like, obviously I was sitting there going, we're going to play a dragon dating game. Which might have made people think, oh, she's going to play a stupid game, but like... The murder mystery, the sci-fi, the actual look into the differences between the two cultures is really, really interesting. I don't sell the game very well when I'm just going on about Dragon Dong. That's my bad. The right amount of movement attracts different kinds of fish. The way That way we can even choose what we're going to eat. And that works. Yeah, not all the time, but often enough. Interesting. There are even groups that exchange tips since they're triangling this way. Suddenly, I saw her whip her tail upwards, which caused the fish to be launched towards the beach where it landed on the ground with an audible thud. There you go. That didn't take too long. It could be very hit and miss. I just got lucky this time, and it's not even the kind of fish I really wanted. I guess that's why you prefer hunting. Yep, and you also don't get the nibble scars in your tail where the fish bite you. I see. I see. Though I suppose angling is also going to be hard for you without a forked tail like we have. 
Actually, we have fishing rods for what that where I come from. What's that? The principle is very similar. Basically, it's a long stick that we hold over the water. A line connected to it has a bait and a hook at the end to catch the fish. And when the fish bites the hook, we can reel in the line to get the fish to us. So you're using a tool to do a very similar thing. Basically, yes. Sometimes we also fish using nets. Oh, some of us do that as well. Not my kind, but usually it's those who either work for a fishing company or sell seafood on the market. I imagine someone like you doesn't have to buy their fish on the market, though. True, but sometimes it's easy to just get them there to, to get them there to get what I want too. Instead of coming all the way here, I see, I see. You weren't around for you. You were around when I was talking about. I've been talking about it like constantly for the last two weeks. Speaking of which, let me get a few more for later. Feel free. Once more, Adine took to the sky to hunt for fish. While it was interesting to watch her for a bit, she kept hunting for a while and started passing her time by collecting some seashells. I could sell a ketchup popsicle to a woman in white gloves. What? <laughs> My voice is really annoying. I have like a really monotone voice. What the hell are you going on about, Jeff? I couldn't sell anything to anyone. Once more, Adine took to the sky and hunt for fish. Well, it was interesting to watch her for a bit. She kept hunting for a while, and I started passing the time by collecting some seashells. Phew, that should last me a while. Oh, what are those? Seashells? They're for you. For me? What for? Well, you could decorate your apartment with them or something. <laughs> wow, not paying attention to me. Wow, Fig, wow. I'm hurt. It breaks my little heart. I see. Maybe I should ask you to clarify this, but does this have any particular significance for humans? Not really, it's just a gift. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Anna. All that hunting was a good warm-up. I feel about ready to start with the practice now. Go ahead, I'll watch from here. I do need all the attention. That is true. That is true. Very true of me. Actually, now I'll be part of an official competition. I need a fancy stage name. She can eat the seashells. That's true too. Do you have something in mind? Not really. Have you got any ideas? Uh, uh, Neil Wing. Neil Wing? That sounds gracious and acrobatic. I like it. Do you mind if I go with that? Not at all. Guess I'll be Neil Wing from now on then. Alright, are you ready to see some aerobatics? I certainly hope so. I'll start off with a few easy moves. The stage is yours, Neil Wing. Thanks. Effortlessly she took to the sky, circling around the area a few times before she started to do a few manoeuvres. Manoeuvres. A roll followed by a loop, after which she did another roll. It seemed to be to be less of a practiced routine and more of a warm-up to me. Gradually, her manoeuvres got more complicated. I saw circles that got smaller and smaller, a brief nose dive, and multiple loops and rolls, one after another. Then she landed and returned to me. What do you think? That was great. You haven't even seen the best part yet. What would that be? What room? You heard no room. Maybe Anna isn't her favourite streamer anymore. To be fair, to be fair, I'm pretty sure she was lying. I, I'm 100% sure I'm not her favourite streamer. My very own Iden special, or rather Neil Wing special, is a routine I came up with and have been practicing for a while. It's pretty difficult, so I'll probably spend the rest of my time until the competition perfecting it as much as possible. What does it look like? It starts off with circles near the ground, then as I ascend, the circles get smaller and smaller. Once I reach the highest point, I go into a nosedive through the middle of the circles. At the show, I'll use a smoke trail when doing the circles, so everyone can actually see me go through the circles I made. That sounds pretty cool. 
That's not all of it. While nose diving, I'll do a few rolls, and just before I hit the ground, I'll pull up again. Lastly, I'll end with a few loops and go to the next manoeuvre. It all ends up making a neat shape in the sky with the smoke trails. Sounds like you've got it all figured out already. Yeah, now I only have to perfect my execution of it. Don't let me hold you up. Alright, here we go. With determination in her eyes, she took to the skies once more. When she reached a certain height, she slowly descended again until she was close to the water's surface. Then she started making her circles, slowly ascending as the circles gradually got smaller and smaller. Once the circles became as small as possible, she suddenly turned herself around and went into a nosedive. Her speed quickly increased while she moved towards the water. Then she did a roll, and then another, followed by the third. Dangerously close to the water's surface, she suddenly pulled up, but as she did so, one of her feet went below the surface, where it apparently caught onto something, causing her to spin out of control. I saw her feeble attempt to regain control as she barely managed to steady herself enough to get back to the beach. She made a rough landing, rolling on the ground a few times after colliding with the sand. Adine, are you alright? Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. It looked pretty impressive until the landing. Ouch, my wing hurts. Let me look, take a look. Can you move it? A bit, but it really starts to hurt if I go further than this. At least it doesn't seem to be broken. Yeah, I guess it's a sprain. Happens all the time. Really? Well, not all the time, but it happens. What about the competition? The injury's going to put a serious damper on my practice schedule, but I'm not giving up anytime soon. I guess practice is over for today, at the very least. Yeah, let's head back. She's going to show us a magazine, guys. She's going to kill us with a magazine. Everybody hide under the bed. I should have some bandages in the cabinet over there. I'll get them for you. What now? Would you do me the honours? Of course, where should I start? I think it's the joint right here. Poor no mag. Were you not around, Sean, when she showed us the Lifestyle magazine? With the 50 top tips to be a better boyfriend. <coughs> just, 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 you know, look away. Don't let your virgin eye see. She got those really useful magazines, not gonna lie. We're gonna get upgraded to- Oh my god, that's like a story today from work. We were working the last of the um, meat delivery, which was the fish, because it came in on a small thing on its own. And one of my work colleagues, who's actually like- She's really sweet. She's a bit of an old lady. And she'd never really say anything weird or anything. She turned around and was like, Can you get any more porn out over there? And I was like, What are you saying to me? It's way too early in the morning to be thinking about porn. That means all ten of us except Jeff needs to look away. Jeff and fictional. Let, let's, let's not pretend that fictional is just as bad as Jeff. In fact, Fictional doesn't like being outdone by Jeff. Never too early for porn. At 5am, when you're working meat and poultry, it's too early to think of anything but not dropping anything on someone else. Especially when there's seven of you all around the same place. You said virgin, though. Virgin eyes! Five a.m. That's when you go to sleep. That's when I start work. Other than today, I wasn't meant to start today at five a.m., but I still showed up at work. Don't drop your slab of meat. I was throwing my meat left, right, and center the other day. Yep, definitely. Okay, let me try to get this right. Can I ask you something? Sure, go right ahead. You went to visit Remy in the library the other day, right? How do you know that? I was there, and Remy told me about everything. To be fair, there's only two other days I can do that, and I'm pretty sure they'll suss me out if I did that. What do you mean, everything? Amelia? Oh. Why did he tell you about all that? He's dealing with a lot of stuff, it seems. Well, he isn't the only one. I actually wanted to talk with him again, but if he doesn't respond, then I can't do anything either. I see. I guess I remind him too much of her. 
If he knew what I know, I'm not sure what he would do. What's that? When she got sick, I often visited her. I just wanted to check up on her and take a little of the edge off, considering what she was going through at work. The night she died, I was actually with her. I stayed with her until pretty late, but as I had to work the next day, I eventually left. It was late enough and I told her to take it easy. She told me that she was just gonna she was just going to finish up one little thing before she got some much needed sleep. But only after I left did she realise that she had run out of her medication and went out alone to get a refill. If she just told me, or if I'd paid more attention and noticed, I could have gone in for her, and then none of this would have happened. And that's not even the worst of it. When she died she she was pregnant. <gasps> They had already made so many plans, and I expected them to announce their engagement any day. Remy doesn't know she was pregnant. He doesn't, or at least I think he doesn't. They couldn't talk to each other much, as they had to keep their relationship secret. It's not exactly something she'd want to mention in just a few sentences. If he knows, then it certainly wasn't from her telling him about it. I see. <laughs> oh, so much. oh my god, and that's going to come up with this game as well. You know, it was so hard today. I had to be like all smiley when my like big managers were in. And I was just like, yeah, I'm happy. Look at me being all happy. I'm the happiest person in the world. When really I was like, I hate everything. <laughs> if it doesn't know, please don't. If he doesn't know, please don't tell him. All right. I know it must have been much harder for him than it was for me. But that doesn't mean I got out of it unscathed. I lost my best friend. I blamed myself for a long time too. I guess I still do. How could I face him knowing that I could have averted this tragedy so easily? That's a great quote. I've seen better though. Well, we've only just started with the quotes, as you can see, with the 32. They've already got enough ridiculous ones though. I think his own feelings aren't that different. How so? He also blames himself for not being with her when it happened. Because they had to keep their relationship secret. Yeah, I see. That must be horrible for him. I think he still hasn't gotten over it. I wish I could help him, I really do. What did you do after it all happened? For a while I just felt guilty, but eventually I realised there are those who have it much worse than myself. I decided to take what I had experienced and to turn it into something positive. That's when I started volunteering at the orphanage. I might be forever alone in real life, but you put that fucking lobster away. Ah, oh, hey, Tony. I didn't see you there. Hey, Tony. I hope you're doing well, mate. There's too many great quotes I heard. Don't you want to hear them? As long as they don't have anything terrible in them, we... We're lurid as hell in here. We'll do sex stuff in here. It's just not gonna have any racial slurs or anything like that in them. Why just let tragedies be tragedies if you if I could do something to help? I share the same sentiment. How so? I came here hoping that I could help humanity. Maybe you're not just helping humanity. We'll do sex stuff in here. <laughs> the context of that is going to be so lost. I was here from the start of the stream. Well, I don't know. I don't keep a viewer thing up, Tony. You've only just showed up for me. I hope you're having a good day, buddy. And if you want to do something next week on stream, let me know. Because I'm streaming every day except for maybe Monday. Maybe you're not just helping humanity. Here, that should do it. How does it feel? Much better. Maybe with this I can even start practice again in a day or two. Just be safe. Of course. Well, thanks for the help of the bandage. I'm sorry about cutting practice short today. I guess you didn't get to see any proper aerobatics after all. It's no big deal. Your health is more important. Thanks for coming at any rate. You're welcome. I guess I'll leave you to recuperate, recuperate now. And maybe I'll see you next time. Sure thing. Bye. Bigger tail, better sex, and extends when you squeeze it. <laughs> this is 
There, there was definitely a sexy dragon in between all of this. Did you not see that? There was one giving me the bedroom eyes. You know, that look. Pretty sure it was Anna as well. Certainly just extend when you squeeze it. The problem is Sean doesn't have anyone to squeeze it for him. But she's dead. I believe she can stay alive, maybe? It definitely looked like Anna, anyway. I awoke with my eyes fixed on the ceiling wallpaper. As the ceiling wallpaper? You put wallpaper on ceilings? Just make sure to be gentle. Well, message me, Tony, and we'll see what we can do. A sense of dread lingered from a nightmare I no longer remembered. How many more times would I see this apartment before I returned to my own world, or before something happened to me? I got ready for the day and tried to shake off those thoughts. Hey Anna, and right, and right on the minute, you show up at this time every day like clockwork. Clocks are reliable, and reliable is good in this line of work. I've got something for you, an envelope from the facility. Oh, these are the results from the tests Anna ran on my blood. She must have sent this before she was... No, it's no use thinking about that now. Maybe the test results will be able to help us. Let's see. Remarkable similarities in genetic makeup, particularly the brain structure. <coughs> oh, I suppose this isn't the only reason you're here. Give him a tip. He just wants a tip. He's like, he's like a porter at a hotel. You know, they stand at the door, like, looking at you, like, give me money. The chief will explain everything once we get there. Let's not keep him waiting, shall we? That's a nice house. Oh, this is the orphanage, I think. <laughs> he wants the tip. Just the tip. He can only take the tip. Sebastian can't take more than the tip. We arrived at a place that would look like any like an ordinary house had it not been for its extraordinary size. It reminded me more of a hostel than a family home. Chief, there you are. Wait, weren't you supposed to be with Amira? Luckily, she doesn't work every day of the week. I see. I see. Anyway, we're nearly done here, so I'll keep it short. Reza broke into the hatchery. There was another murder victim, an employee of the hatchery who was on night duty. Her body was found quite away from here. There's evidence of a struggle, but she covered a lot of distance before it was ultimately over. Loud bangs were heard from the area her body was found, and she has numerous wounds consistent with both the wounds of the previous victims and that other weapon he has. By this point, news of another corpse didn't have the same impact anymore. She was just another one of Reza's faceless victims. A hatchery? Is that what this building is? Well, not only. It's a council-owned building, and they like keeping everything related to their sector under the same roof. So besides the hatchery, there's also an orphanage and a family clinic inside. There are also offices related to the administration of those services. That reminds me of a production facility. It should. They have a similar management structure. Can we get back to the case? Sorry for the interruption, Chief. Wait a minute. If an orphanage is in there too... There are no other casualties, but Reza got something else when he broke in. A generator as well as a few eggs. Guys! Guys! Guys, who volunteers at the ha at the orphanage? Just saying, little Miss Murder Pants is looking a little bit more guilty by the day. She just told us how her friend was gonna have a baby and the stolen eggs. Just saying. Luckily, the power was restored before anything happened to all the other eggs left inside. But needless to say, the parents of the stolen eggs are not going to be happy. Why would he steal eggs in the first place? Maybe you can tell us. That's why you're here after all. I don't know. I have no idea what you would even do with them. Maybe he wants to use them as a bargaining chip. After all, he still has to make his escape and a portal is still broken. Do you think he wants to exchange them for a safe passage through the portal? Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. See you in a bit, Sean. It's still broken, though, so I'm not sure if that would be much help. Maybe he has the part needed to repair it, and now has everything he needs to escape. He could trade the eggs for a safe passage, fix the portal, and leave. 
That's not the only possibility. He may not be the one who broke the portal. Maybe he thinks you intentionally sabotaged it so he can't leave and he feels he needs the eggs as bargaining chip to get you to repair it. If he just wanted to leave, I feel like he could have done that already. It doesn't even matter who sabotaged the portal. We only know that Reza's actions are becoming more and more desperate. He kidnapped defenseless eggs and even used a human weapon. Something's clearly going on with him. Maybe it means that he'll slip up soon. Who knows, maybe he already has. In any case, we're done here. Let's head back to the department and decide what to do next. Hopefully some of the test results will tell us something. After a brief walk, we were in Bryce's office again. Initial test results had already come in, but didn't reveal any insightful or new information. Uh, it was just a random person in the hatchery. It's a hatchery worker. <clears throat> so what do we do now? Go over the timeline again. Not yet. There are a few things I'd like to take care of first. What do you have in mind? Suddenly there was a knock at the door. That's one hell of a fucking knock. Come in. It's Maverick, isn't it? Yeah, of course it's Maverick. Maverick, what are you doing here? Chief, can I talk to you alone? We're quite busy here, Maverick. What is this about? Reza. Well, you're looking at the Reza task force, so if anything to say, you can say it in front of all of us. I see. I think I know where Reza is. You know where Reza is at this very moment? I have good reason to believe that I have located his hideout. He could still be there, or he might have already moved on. Damn, Maverick, tell me everything. I've been tracking him for a while now. When he was at the portal a few days ago, I nearly got him and managed to follow him for a while before I lost him. Based on that, where he's been and where his victims have been found, I could triangulate his whereabouts. He has to live somewhere, right? He needs a base to hide the generators and everything he has stolen. Bryce cleared the cutter on a, tab on a table and smoothed out a map of the town on its surface. It already had a few locations related to the case marked on it. Show it to me. Prior victims were found here and here. Today was here. She was following him, likely because she wanted to save the eggs he stole. This is the path he took from the portal when I followed him a few days ago. So we have established this is the area of operation. Extrapolate it and we can narrow it down to this. Now where can he be hiding in this area? He's certainly not within the village borders, so unless he's decided to live in the wilderness or in a hole in the ground, the only option is here. The abandoned farm. When did you figure all of this out? Just a few minutes ago. When I did, I immediately came here. He could have just roared at the door and make it scared so it opens for him. His bloody bad temper. If a door was stood before him, the door would probably burst into fucking tears at the look of him. Damn it, Maverick. This might be it. Should we send an observation team? As it... Ha as if we had one to spare. Heck, we're going there right now. What about you, Maverick? I'm still on sick leave, remember? Besides, if I saw Reza right now, I'd probably do something I shouldn't. How about you, Anna? Isn't this going to be dangerous? Reza probably won't harm you, as you're the only one he could possibly consider an ally. Good point. If anything, with you there, we might be able to convince him to give up. Or we could act like we intend to trade you for the eggs if he tries to use them as a bargaining chip. You're not really going to use me as a ransom, right? We'll see about that. I suppose if it's necessary, I'll have to play along. I've got your back. If there's one thing we could do to make this whole situation even worse, it would be messing up with you. We have the element of surprise. We walk into his base right now, but we risk Reza lashing out with his weapon. If we want to resolve this peacefully, observation is probably the way to go. I guess we won't need Anna there for that, though. True enough. All right, Anna, you stay here and wait for further instructions. We may need you at a moment's notice. Don't do anything without us telling you to, understand? Okay. All right, then. Let's go, Sebastian. After you, Chief. And Maverick, good job. Thanks, Chief. They're leaving me with Maverick. Shortly after he vanished, Maverick also turned to leave. Oh. Then I had to wait. Bryce and Sebastian were observing the farm now, and if anything new happened, I would be the first to know. I spent some time looking around Bryce's office, studying all the material he had gathered about the case, though there wasn't any information that I didn't already know. After a few hours, the telephone in his office rang, and not sure whether the call was intended for me or Bryce, I picked up. Anna? Yes? I think you need to come here. I'll give you the directions. No problem. Who's we'll see about that. There you are. So what happened? A whole lot of nothing. There was no movement to or from the building in the time we've been watching. He usually operates during the night, so maybe he's just asleep. 
In that case, it would be best for us to go in before he has a chance to make his escape. Or maybe he's not even there anymore. He could have seen us and slipped away unnoticed with plenty of time to destroy the evidence while we've been waiting here. You're right. Either he's still inside or he's already gone and not coming back. Let's go in. What should I do? You're coming with me. Sebastian, you walk around and watch the back of the building just in case he tries to escape. I'm on it, Chief. I'm on it, Chief. <laughs> Who sleeps? Definitely no one in this bloody chat by the sounds of it. I go in and you stay here, all right? What am I even here for then? You're our insurance. If Reza tries to flee and sees you, it might throw him off. You might be able to stop him. Or if we get into a standoff, I can tell him you're here as well. I just don't want you to come inside when it could become dangerous. Alright, fine. I watched as Bryce made his way to the front door. Looking around, I scanned the windows of the building for any sign of movement. When Bryce reached the door, I wondered how he would make his entry. Would he try to be quiet and sneak around, hoping to find Reza unprepared? Or would he barge in and rely on his strength and speed to apprehend him? Though, shortly after Bryce opened the door, an earth shattering sound echoed across the sky. Bryce! Bryce! Not Bryce! I can't believe he's really gone. I'm sorry, Anna. I just don't know what to say. All the responsibility falls on me now, and Reza is still out there somewhere. This case is just beyond our capabilities. We were already at a bare minimum before this, but with Bryce gone, I just don't know what we should do now. I've already requested help from one of the cities. I hope they'll send some good investigators our way as soon as possible. At least we've reclaimed everything that was stolen. Well, except for the eggs. I don't want to have to explain to the parents how the children were killed in the explosion. All of the generators were just sitting inside there. It makes me think that Reza must have left in a hurry. And we got so close too. It was his hideout for crying out loud. He probably just saw us approaching and left before we even had the chance to apprehend him. But you know what? We can't stop now. If anything, this has only proven that he's even more dangerous than we thought. If Reza can make bombs out of generators, who's to say where he'll use them next? We have to stop him, Anna. Are you with me? Yes. N nothing else, just yes. We, we do that. Regardless of Bryce's death, we have, tr we, have, we have to try our best to proceed with the investigation. For his memory and for the sake of the town. At least Reza doesn't have any generators for now. All the stolen ones were accounted for inside the building. Alright, let me see what else we have. When we searched the building, we found more than the things Reza stole. We also found this bloody bandage. Do you think that's his? That's what we need to find out. But given all that we know, it probably is. So he's wounded. We know he, has in he was injured during the fight with his first victim. But whether this is from the same wound or something else, I'm not sure. In any case, you could bring it to the lab for us to find out more. Sure. Next, we have a witness who reported hearing loud bangs during the night. We'd like to send someone to make a follow-up visit. We'll need to confirm the witness statement, and then see if he has anything new to share. Also, now that we have reclaimed our P your PDAs, we're going to send one to the archives for analysis. Since they have experience with human artifacts, they're better suited to do it than any of our departments. No problem. In any case, I'll just leave everything here until I get to it, so feel free to do these tasks as you wish. I know it's laughable that we don't even have a free hand for simple errands. Don't worry about it. Anyways, I should get back to the investigation now. I'll leave the stuff for you here, and I'll take care of the rest once I get back, alright? Sure thing. Good luck, Anna. I mean, our character doesn't really give two shits about anything. We're like, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. I'll do that. Yeah, I see. Especially, I see. That that's, that's like the thing that we say. You two. You two. Take the bandages. Let's go down this list, one at a time. I hope this is the right place. Can I help you? Yeah, I'm just dropping this evidence off on behalf of the police. From the Reza case, right? I already read the memo. Yep, well, here you go. Thanks, I'll get right onto it. <laughs> that was easy! Not the sexy dragon. Is it the witness? This is a nice apartment. I want to live here. Look at that dragon. That's one cool ass dragon. Can I help you? You must be Ipsum, is that right? Yes. Oh, I think I've met him before. I'm working with the police and hoped we could answer. A f you could answer a few questions. Oh, do you have any news about my roommate? 
This is about the noises you heard last night. What is going on with your roommate? He went missing a few days ago. I already talked to someone from the police about this, but I haven't heard back from him since. I'm sorry, this is the first I've heard about this. I don't know what happened to him. He didn't go on vacation, nor did he suddenly decide to visit the next town. I know if he did, he would have told me. Honestly, I find it odd that when someone goes missing, I don't hear back for several days. But when I hear loud banging noises during the night, the police send someone over immediately. I'm sorry, but I don't think I want to talk about this right now. Oop. Oop. Thanks for all your help. Now that the facility has received a bandage, maybe we'll discover something new. I'll take care of the remaining tasks so you can take the rest of the day off. I'm sure you have things to do other than helping the police department. It's no problem, really. My trip to your world wasn't supposed to be a vacation. Alright then, I'll see you next time. See you. They got over Bryce's death just a little bit fast. Just a little bit fast. After this fateful day, I was glad to finally have some sort of respite. I wandered into the kitchen as I considered tonight's dinner. Should I cook something or order out? When I returned to the living room, I suddenly found my strength leaving me and collapsed to the floor. Oh! The next thing I saw was a blurry stone ceiling. As my eyesight slowly returned, I managed to sit up. I was in a cave and before me stood a familiar mysterious face. I apologise for the violence, but I can assure you it was the easiest way. No, oh, don't skip ahead. As you wish. Where am I? Is this your hideout? Just a temporary accommodation so we can be undisturbed for this meeting. Someone else used to live here until recently. Do you know who I am? Well, you're not Reza. Good. What did it take for you to figure that out? Since you're not whispering anymore, I can hear it clearly in your voice. I had a feeling that you couldn't be him since the first time we met, though. Which first time are you talking about? The generator in the cellar when you pushed me. I see. You can call me the administrator. No other humans are supposed to be here though. I assume that's why you're wearing the mask. You don't want to be recognized. That is correct. Whoever you are, you also saved my life. One, on more than one occasion. Your presence here doesn't make any sense. You couldn't have come through the portal. The dragons would have noticed. This is where you are wrong. My arrival through the portal is what led the dragons to discover it in the first place. Is that so? <laughs> They're pretty creepy human. I mean, it might not be. This portal has already... Wait a minute. Has already led us to dragons. Why not? That could just be their face. They might not be wearing a mask. Have I left my bag downstairs? I've left my bag downstairs. I'm going to have to run downstairs, but... Oh, no, it's right behind me. Ignore me. It's actually a dog. It's a bunch of dogs in a cloak. Oh, shit. My bag might be wet. Oh well. When I crawled out from the hole in the earth that hid the portal, there were no guards to discover me. My appearance exposed the portal, but the dragons didn't know it was there yet. So you arrived even before Reza. That makes you the actual first human to come to this world. That is more the truth than you might think. Just who are you then? I may have arrived through the portal like you, but my story is very different. Information dump! Before the fall of humanity, I was an engineer. I was part of a team that was formed to create bioweapons. Our task was to create these bioweapons in a country where their development hadn't yet been regulated or outlawed. These weapons were planned to be a low-cost alternative for poor countries to wage war so they would no longer have to rely on expensive drones and machines for warfare. I was to set up the lab where a bioweapon development would take place. It was a clandestine operation set to, be in the, set to be in the middle of the wilderness. The laboratory was an independent research and living unit and provided everything we needed without having to rely on external resources or even an existing power grid. Everything, everything was to be teleported right into the middle of nowhere with no traces or paper trail to follow so international communities and law enforcement could have no idea of our operation. Our only connection to the outside world after setup would have been a two-way portal to our headquarters who would provide everything we needed. While we already could teleport individual people, teleporting a whole building was another matter entirely. Our solution was, 
was matter compression technology, incredibly, be incredibly expensive, but operating in the grey market was also very lucrative. The technology behind it was much more complicated than even teleportation, despite being based on it. While teleportation works by utilising black holes with a beginning and an end, compression technology relies on a loop, keeping matter in a sort of limbo state until the loop is broken. Working with black holes was very complicated to begin with, but this shape required much more finesse and thus was much more expensive. I was to be sent alone to set up the lab and the portal so the rest of the team could, could arrive safely. In case you didn't know, it is possible to use a portal to send someone to a previously defined endpoint. Therefore, it is not required to have a portal at the destination to be sent there, but as you can imagine, this is also very dangerous. A single variable off by a fraction could mean the difference between landing safely at your destination and smothering in space. Of course, my employer did not want anything like that to happen, not necessarily for my own sake, but because of all the unfathomably expensive equipment I had with me. Regardless, something went wrong anyway. Despite all their checks and safeguards, they could only minimise the risk so much. Even if the risk is a fraction of a fraction, sometimes you are just that unlucky, and sometimes it turns out that your bad luck is a blessing in disguise. I arrived safely somewhere in the jungles of Earth, yet it was not the destination that had been planned. I knew something was off, but nevertheless I set to work immediately. At the very least I could prepare the building. I would have shelter and then I could begin pre preparations for our project. Getting a portal into working order would take more time as it was a complicated process that could take several weeks. If things had gone wrong as I suspected, I would at least be able to establish contact with headquarters after the portal had been set up and I would be able to return. While teleporting the lab to the wrong location was certainly a costly mistake, I was still lucky to have my life. Before long, I discovered the truth about the place I had arrived. While I was still on Earth, it was not the Earth I knew. It was an Earth of 65 million years ago. We knew that by utilising black holes for teleportation, time travel was a theoretical theoretical possibility. It was something even my company didn't dare to attempt, though as teleportation in itself was still a very new technology. Yet here I was, 65 million years in the past, with a research station all to myself. The company would re revel in the opportunity to study and profit from all the different life forms I could see, if only they knew about them. I spent the few weeks set I spent the few weeks setting up the port was planned, yet when I tried to re-establish contact with my employer, I was met with silence. Despite the time discrepancy, the portal should have been able to find my companies in the present. For a black hole, sending something through time is no different than sending something through space. However, when we built the portals, we gave them a specialised configuration. It was only possible to travel through space by aligning them across the time axis. That meant that I, in the past, would still be able to search for portals in the present to co connect with. My counterparts in the present, though, would not be able to find me in the past, even if they tried. But I couldn't find them, not a single one. Even after checking the portal for its function, I determined that, for all intents and purposes, the portals from the company should have been there to connect with. It was then that I had a terrible realisation. The portals in the present didn't exist anymore, or were no longer operational. Maybe the blunder of teleporting the lab caused them to reconsider the ta risks of using this technology. After all, it was already controversial and had been outlawed in several countries. I wouldn't have been surprised if they decided to cut their losses, but it was highly unlikely that they would have immediately shut down every single portal and left me stranded without no notice. Portal technology was still being relied on in several places in the present. In my mind, only one possibility remained, super weapons. Various nations had been using them as a bargaining chips for some time. I didn't think the threats had become th that serious, but one of them must have launched their weapons and destroyed the majority of Earth. It could have been a result of a malfunction, or perhaps a political situation had escalated. Either way, it was not possible for me to establish any means of communication to find out what had really happened. I could have sent myself back to, into the present with the right coordinates, but this was a risky endeavour, and I also had to ask myself if it was a present I wanted to return to. I was sure that if anything was even left of our world, the aftermath or a possible retaliatory strike would take care of the rest. In the end, I had to realise that whichever present did exist was likely not one that was worth returning to. It made my decision all the easier. Instead of returning to a destroyed civil civilization, I saw an opportunity. Rather than creating bioweapons, I could use the lab to create a new civilization shaped by my own ideals. I had all the necessary data and the most modern methods and machines at my fingertips. Besides, most of the processes had already been automated. 
In the end, I still used the lab for what it had been created for, fusing human and animal DNA to create beings that were mostly animal, but possessed a greater intelligence that, had allow that allowed them to learn whatever we wanted them to. As I didn't have any animal samples sent with me when I initially arrived, I collected them from the sources available to me. Automated processes mixed the DNA further across the samples. New abilities were added like enhanced armor, flight, and spit weapons to make the new creatures more effective in combat. The result was a number of different species, each tailored and optimized to fill a specific role in a war situation. Hormones allowed me to sp speed up the them speed up their growth, and with the lab's learning program, they could be educated in whatever manner I saw fit. My first concern was self-sufficiency. They needed the kind of knowledge that would enable them to come together as their own independent society. Luckily, the AI that automated all the processes in the lab was more than helpful. I unleashed the first generation of my creation and as their leader founded our first village. I thought we could really pull it off and once I saw that they could survive without my guidance and also govern themselves, I knew my plan was a success. When I realised that this new society would eventually be destroyed, I told myself that I would do anything I could to save it. Destroyed? What are you talking about? Haven't you realised where we are? The Chikora asteroid is headed for us. With a diameter of over 10 kilometres, its impact will create humongous clouds of dust, throwing Earth into a literal dark age. They will block out the sunlight for over a year, killing off many species of plants that rely on photosynthesis to survive. As a result, animals that eat those plants will also vanish, as will those who sought substance from, those, from these herbivores. All in all, 75% of all species will vanish, and in terrestrial ecosystems, all animals heavier than a single kilogram will die. There will be 2.2 pounds in case you didn't know. It will be the end of everyone who lives here, every single dragon you have seen, unless we do something. We? What am I supposed to do? Do you not wish to save them? I came here to help humanity. Now you tell me that this society, this whole world, is also at, on the brink of extinction. That is the truth. What kind of difference could a single person like me even make to save it? Right now, it's also a single person that presents its greatest threat. Reza, how? In order to stop the comet, we will need as much power as possible. We reclaimed all the generators he stole. Besides, how could a few of them be enough to make a difference for something like this? Don't forget the Reza is still out there, looking for more. The truth is, I don't know if all the generators we could gather would ever be enough. We will require enough power to divert the common's path during a crucial moment, but even if this plan is possible, we will need every single generator we can get. So my goal hasn't changed, I just need to find Reza. Yes, but you need my help, and maybe the help of others. You know that Reza is dangerous, and with his gun, he has a clear advantage. Don't think that he wouldn't hesitate to kill you if you were in his way. Then what shall we do? Do you know where he is? No, but I think you'll find him soon, and you can count on my support when that happens. I see. There is one thing that still doesn't make sense to me, though. The dragons have myths about you, but they don't know or remember you. They haven't seen any humans for who knows how long. How much time could have passed since you created them and now? Is it a comet or an asteroid? Yes. <laughs> yes. How many generations could it take to forget? Why isn't there proof of your existence? I don't know exactly how long it's been myself. When I realised what time period I was in and that my creation was about to be wiped out in the future, I wanted to go to that future and see what they have become. I disabled the portal's time access safeguards and thus enabled it to connect with others in different times. This also included that very same portal in the future. With the generator of our lab being able to supply the portal with power for an indefinite amount of time, I was able to travel to any point in the future I wanted to. The entry and end point of the black hole would be the same place in the same portal, with the way travel travelled being just along the time axis. Since I could now search for connection points in any time period, I could look for my own portal in the future and pinpoint the moment its signal stopped. The comet. Comet. <laughs> comet! Jesus Christ, not the comment! Exactly. Oh. I found that specific point in time and travelled to a future that was, as, that was as close to that event as I could safely manage. After I arrived here, my escape from the portal's hiding place led to its discovery by the dragons. It and the laboratory were un unearthed. I still don't understand how our portal found yours or why we ended up arriving at this particular time period. The portal you found was no doubt one of my companies. They must have been connected before, so the corresponding data for their connection already existed when you found it. 
I'm not sure if that could bypass the anti-time travel safeguards though. Was it completely operational when you found it? No, it took a little bit of tinkering, probably jumping the hardware safeguard in the process. Now consider the connected portals travel along the time axis together. The data for the beginning and end points are adjusted auto automatically. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to transport anything from one place in the world to, the, uh, to another without also sending it through time. Since these two portals must have, come, must have been connected at some point, the corresponding data for the connection between those two portals already exists. existed. When using the same connection without changing any of the data, this would mean that despite the time discrepancy between those two, these two portals, time still progressed linearly for them. I'm not sure I understand. Let me try to re rephrase that. The port you found and my own share a connection. However, while the connection is locked to a certain place, which is wherever the portal is at that very moment, is not connected to a specific point in time. For us in the physical machines that are the portals, time passes linearly, and we can't do anything about that. However, for the black holes, this isn't the case. Just as the entry and end points can be, be in different places, they, ugh, they can also be in different times. In order to not send something through time, when we just want to transport something from one port to another, the portals are anchored together in such a way that the time date is automatically synchronised. Essentially, this means that ever since you arrived in this world, the same amount of time that has passed for you has also passed in the place where you come from. I see, so despite being in different time periods, time still passes linearly on both sides of the portals. Otherwise, it will not have been possible for you to send messages back and forth to each other. If they were not synchronised, the portals on both sides would stay connected, not only to, to a single point in space, but also to a single point in time, thus making proper two-way communication impossible. However, this is only possible through the connection that has already been forged. If we wanted to, we could also use our port to send you back to your own time period, but to a moment before Reza even arrived here. But that would mean that would be two of me, right? Wouldn't that cause a time paradox? I can only really tell you that it would work. No one has studied time travel before, before though, so if there are any consequences, then I'm not sure of them. Most likely, an entirely new timeline would be created. There would be a timeline without an Anna altogether in a new one, and there would be two of you. This is becoming way too complicated. I apologise. To come back to your original question, I'm not sure how much time passed between the time I left my newborn society and now. Since the portal was not designed for time travel, I have no way of knowing how the variables translated to our perception of time. It could have been thousands or even millions of years. How could the portal even... Its how could the portal, or even its power source, still be operational after all this time? The portal receives its power from the generator in the lab. These units were fitted with the absolute best technology we had to offer. It was designed to provide sustainable power completely independently from any already existing network or power lines. It gains energy from many resources, sun rays, earth sea, and movement, just to name a few. Keep in mind it had, a power, it had to power a whole laboratory and research station while also providing the energy required for all of its inhabitants and the associate energy expand, expenditures. Taking its power from Earth itself, a generator like this could continue providing power to the lab indefinitely. Speaking of which, why haven't I seen a single dinosaur since I arrived? It seems that the Dragon Society expanded over the whole continent. Many still hunt on their own for sustenance, and as such, the original species they were based on have mostly vanished. As in direct competition, ours proved to be far superior. Also, they have probably taken measures against having big predators roam their cities and villages. And while the dragon population has increased tremendously, I have found that by and large the society as a whole has not changed much. Is that why everything here looks like it was made for humans? I suppose so. The learning program I initially used to give them knowledge about things and how to create them, yet of course those were only human inventions and designs. Did they never once stop to think that they should adjust how certain things look? A lot of furniture... <laughs> oh, thanks this for the resub, for a while, Cosmonies. And thanks for the music, in a too. Few months, props keep up the good work, a worker and mods. Stay safe, face with mask, musical and you stay safe. Very musical Love you lots, of that. I was surprised at that too, but I have an explanation for this phenomenon. Don't forget that their genome was designed by an AI program to make them into effective bioweapons. The idea was to have them indoctrinate, indoctrinate, 
I can't say it. Oh, why can't I say it? Indoctrinated at a young age. After reaching adolescence, their learning capacity would be greatly diminished. This resulted in subjects that would stay loyal and be unlikely to change their desired behaviours. Instincts also play a role. I imagine they are very much at odds with their learned behaviour. Instincts in animals never change, and instinctual behaviours will always be there. If a given trait has been programmed into their genome as an instinct, it is not very likely to change, even through numerous generations. We can see the result of this here. While I initially made them learn a certain set of values and knowledge, I have found that the expressions of these uh, those ideas has hardly changed. And after I was gone, each new generation learned from its elders, and much of the initial knowledge and information was retained through all this time. The genome as a whole did change, however, which was unavoidable, unavoidable over time. If they had been used as bioweapons as intended, they would have been nothing more than an army of identical clones. While I can see subtle changes in behaviour as a result, some traits are still very much present in them. They are con content with what they have and don't strive for more. Uh, at everyone in str the stream one, in stream announce announcements, thank you. They don't innovate or change, so te te technological breakthroughs or new inventions are a rarity. It's quite the opposite, really. They very much value tradition and their ways, which have not changed much in these last years. I see. How much time do we even have left to stop the comment? Comment. Comment. Comet. Comet. I can say comet. Guys, I can say it. In a few weeks, the comet will pass the moon and its gravity field will point the comet's trajectory towards Earth. This is when they will need to be ready. If we strike then, we only need to minimally affect its path in order for the comet to pass Earth safely. There won't be enough time for the inhabitants of this world to prepare if resin steals our greatest assets. So it's all about resin and generators, isn't it? Indeed. By the way, I fixed the portal in case we need to use it. Did you break it to prevent me from being sent away? No, that wasn't me. Reza better not use it to escape. Trust me, the portal is our greatest asset. I have programmed it with emergency coordinates. If you should find yourself in a hopeless situation and feel there is no other way out, go to the portal. I have made sure only you will be able to use them. I'll keep that in mind. So what's your plan? What do we do now? I will resume my work and you will continue yours. Find Reza. The administrator turned to leave. Wait, what's with all the secrecy? Why are you still wearing that mask? Why don't we pull our resources together and you show me your hideout? Hey, Bren. I hope work went well. Don't you think it would be better if we were completely frank with me? No, not now. A second later, the figure had already vanished into the darkness outside. When I followed, I realised that I wasn't sure how to get back into my apartment. Surrounded by trees and a blanket of night, it was hard to make out where I stood. After wandering through that underbrush, I realised that the lights on the horizon had to be coming from the village and made my way back. I returned to my apartment without much trouble. When I looked at the clock, I was surprised to see how much time had passed. Not having anything left to do for the day, I soon fell into a deep slumber. I didn't get to go and sex up Remy! Oh no! Seems there's nothing for me to do this morning. I guess they don't need me at the police department. Not that I mind. Seems I've got some messages. Let's see. Hello, this is Remy. I just wanted to remind you about the summer festival. It will start any day now, so I hope you can make it. It would be nice to go there with you. I'm not sure how you feel about this, but I usually try to avoid the crowds. In any case, please let me know if you want to go. The summer festival, huh? Here it is. Are we going with Remy or Adine? Remy or Adine? Remy, Drakbar. I thought it'd be Drakbar. Don't want to get too close to the serial killer. She's a serial killer, guys. We've already figured that one out. Bing. Oh, that must be him. This is exactly what I think Akbar looks like when he goes on a date. 
this is Akbar. This is Akbar on a date. This is my mod. This is Akbar. Rami, what's that on your face? Don't you know what it is? Well, it looks like lipstick, but I didn't know what. No, that was a thing here. You're right, it is lipstick. It's not something that existed in this world before, though. How did you get some, then? I have one of your PDAs, remember? I studied it a bit and came across the entry on lipstick. Based on the necess necessary ingredients, I realised I could make some myself, and so I did. Dr. Akbar. Did you do this to look pretty for me? I just figured you'd miss these kind of things. Things that are normal for you. It hasn't really been normal back home in quite a while. Lipstick isn't common these days. Didn't the entry specify that it's typically used by females? Now that you mention it, I did get that impression, but I found the sentiment a bit puzzling. Why would a product like this only be used by one gender? Well, I guess social norms dictated that certain traits are only desirable in one gender, thus highlighting them like this would increase their attractiveness. Oh, I think I get it now. It's all based on sexual dimorphism. The biological differences between the sexes are much greater in your species than it is in ours, so I suppose the traits you are looking for could be different too. Generally speaking, sexual dimorphism is much greater in mammals than it is in reptiles. Well, it can be re re the, the, the. Well, it can vary wildly by species, external indicators are pretty much always present, like mammaries for example, an always present and often obvious reminder. This makes so much more sense now, it's kind of embarrassing. Should I get rid of it? Men can wear lipstick if they want to. Men can wear lipstick. Did he, did, what did he ask? Wait, let me go back. I can't go back. Did he ask to, if he should get rid of it? I can't remember. <laughs> I just read it. Alright, no. No, leave it on. It's not as if people here would know about its history. I suppose that's true. Besides, the thing about females wearing it isn't really a hard rule, and there are males who do it too. Anyone can wear it if they want to, really. Well, if you say so. Still, it's kind of uncomfortable, so I think I'd rather take it off. Uncomfortable? I suppose it's not really suited for our scales. Here, that should do it. Shall we go then? Actually, it seems we're pretty early. They're probably still setting up. I see. Well, we could just stay here in the meantime. Oh, for sure. I just realised I haven't actually been in here since I prepared the apartment for you. Have you read any of the books I got you? Oh, so you're the one who stocked the bookshelf. They're all library books. I wanted to provide you with a good sample of what we have to offer, so there should be something in there for anyone. Looks like you've read a few books in this Sheridan series. They're pretty interesting. Oh, really? I know they're not exactly highbrow, but they're entertaining. And what more do you want a book to be? I guess we all have our own tastes. Can I offer you some food or drink? I've barely used any of the stuff in the kitchen. Why not? I didn't want to touch anything that didn't at least resemble something I know. After all, I have no idea how to prepare them right or even know if they are safe for me to eat. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea to get you all those perishables then. I wanted to provide you with a bit of everything considering I had to prepare the apartment for someone I didn't really know much about. Oh, some of them were good. It's interesting to taste the subtle and sometimes not so subtle differences in the similar fruits we have back home. Did you throw anything out? Not really. Why do you ask? You've been here for nearly two weeks now, so even if some of them were safe for you to eat, they probably aren't anymore. Let me clean out your closet. We don't want to have any health hazards for you here, after all. Well, feel free. Do my housework for me, Remy. Just look at this. He showed me a juicy looking, vaguely spherical fruit whose bright red colour was unlike any other fruit I'd ever seen. There's a very bright red. I don't think even our best apples could compare. Well, they're usually blue. Red means you're supposed to throw them away, as they have expired by then and toxins might have already set in. Oh, I wasn't planning on eating it anyway. Or oh, this one. It's all mouldy. I don't see any mould. Don't you see these spots? Sure, but if that's supposed to be mould, it looks very different from the mould we have back home. I see. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea to stock up on perishables. I didn't consider all the implications of doing something like this. Had you eaten the wrong thing, you could be in hospital right now. 
don't stress yourself out about it. Honestly, someone would have been pretty. Someone would have to be pretty reckless to just go ahead and start munching on things they don't know about. If anyone was smart enough to be sent here, they probably wouldn't take a risk like that. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Nevertheless, I better get rid of everything that's passing today. We don't really want the mold in the air either, if you say so. Once more, he dove into the closet. I heard him rummaging around as he checked the fruits and vegetables thoroughly. That should be everything. Thanks. I bet the wine didn't go bad, though. Do you want some? I'm not really a big fan of wine. How come? I just can't enjoy it as some others do, I suppose. I'm willing to try anything at least once, though. Anything? Well, at least as far as food and drinks are concerned. Let's try something together, then. Romantic-like. Well, if you want to, sure. What kind of wine is this anyway? I'm not sure. I was just grabbing when I got all the other stuff. Don't tell me you just went for the cheapest one. Of course not. Everyone knows that you don't just buy the cheapest stuff. You go for the second cheapest. Oh, well. What kind of container should I give you anyway? We're having wine, so let's go for wine glasses. The stem actually makes it possible for me to grip with my vegetable thumb, so there shouldn't be any problems. All right. Here you go. What shall we drink to? An interesting afternoon, a wonderful friendship, whatever. What do you guys want to do? That is why we're here to date dragons. This would even make himself pretty for me. The school answer. <laughs> Whatever. The fourth option. Getting you in my bed after we drink this wine. Friendship! Should we go with an interesting afternoon? Alright, to an interesting afternoon and whoever it may bring. I took a sip from my wine glass. Remy really hadn't been kidding about getting the second cheapest bottle because that was exactly what it tasted like. How do you like it? it must be an acquired taste, I think. How about you? It's alright. It's okay. I mean, you can't really expect much from a cheap bottle of wine. I see. Just look at the time. I think we can start heading to the festival now. Sure, let's go. Let's go. This is strange. Usually there'd be a crowd by now. Do you think they cancelled it? With Reza still being out there, maybe they went to... They thought it wasn't a good idea to have a public spectacle like this. Cancel the summer festival? Inconceivable! It doesn't really look like a festival is going on right now, though. I don't know what's going on. Hey, I think I know this guy. Let's go and ask him. Hey, Anna. How can I help you? We were just planning to go to the festival, but it doesn't seem like there's much going on here yet. You came to the right place, but the festival is not starting for another hour, at least. What? But the festival has always started at this time. You must have missed the memo then. They moved it by an hour. Something about the daylight and making the fireworks more visible as a result. Well, that's a shame. And I'm kind of getting hungry too. I can help you with that. What are you selling? Skewers, meatballs, all kinds of grilled things, really. Well, I could go for some meatballs. How about you? I'll also take some of those meatballs, yeah, yeah, meatballs, eh, eh, yeah. Definitely make for an interesting afternoon. No problem, just let me pack this up for you. I guess this makes it, this makes us your first customers of the day. What do I owe you? For you two, it's free. That's very kind of you, thank you. Have fun at the festival, thanks. So what do we do now? Should we go back? Well, we're already here and got all this stuff. Let's just sit down somewhere. Sure. Sure. I mean, he shouldn't. I'm currently eating meat-free stuff most of the time. If I had ribs and wings this afternoon. I don't think I necessarily said I was vegetarian. I just wanted the vegetarian option. Oh, 
I want meatballs, fictional. Meatballs in my mouth right now. Not veggie ones. You just never know with these games. He might have said something if we chose the fair veggie option. We went off to the side as more dragons arrived and started setting up their various booths. How are the meatballs? They're actually pretty good. How about your stuff? It's great. I'm surprised, honestly. You never know with stuff that comes out of food carts. You're right. Maybe we got lucky. Or maybe it's because it's still fresh. Who knows? What was that about fireworks, though? There's a big show coming up later. Oh no, the festival is just getting started. There are fireworks every day, but the big show is what everyone wants to see. That one is happening in a few days. It officially concludes the festivities. I see. I see. A while later, the festivals, the festival had kicked off and the crowds were already coming in. Dragons of all shapes and colours filled the paths, ready to see, to see the sights the festival had to offer. Booths lined both sides of the way. It reminded me a lot of a typical carnival setup, with the booths being filled with shops, food stands, games and much more. Seems the festival has already started. Let's go. Let's go. You know what? How about we just stay here? I really don't like crowds. I've seen the festival so many times already. I'd rather just stay here with you. I thought you wanted to show me around, but I suppose we can't just stay here if you'd prefer it that. The main attraction is always the big fireworks show at the end of the festival, and that one is not going to happen today anyway. So why do we need to come here in the first place then? Is something wrong? I just had to realise that as nice as it- wait. I just had to realise that as nice as it is right now, you'll have to leave this world again eventually. I've been alone for such a long time now. I didn't even have a single friend. In my job, I always had to smile when serving the customers. How could I be surrounded by people all the time yet feel so alone? That's a mood! All those people have their own lives, families, friends and relationships. You had none of that. In a world where everyone else seemed to be happy, I was the old one out who had to pretend in order to belong. How could that not have eaten away at me day after day? Yet one day, I heard about the plans of the humans coming here. Like many others, I was very excited at the prospect of our myths coming true. And then the day came when Reza stepped through the pet portal and missed all the pomp and fanfare you could imagine. It was quite a sight to behold, really. You wouldn't believe how much joy I felt during that moment. Amira, of course, took all the limelight she could. First, there was a big speech in front of a huge crowd, and then a procession after she had officially welcomed Reza. When it was time for you to arrive and it was decided it wouldn't be a public event this time due to security concerns, I knew that Amira wasn't going to be there if she wasn't able to make it all about herself. I begged her to let me do it, just to be able to get this close to a human at least once, to talk with them and see what they were like, to experience them. She told me that if I did a few favours for her, I could be the one to greet you. I knew that she wasn't going to be there anyway, but if I didn't do what she wanted, she would just send some other lackey instead, so I did everything she asked for. She did keep her word though, and in the end, I was not i was the one who would introduce you to this little world of ours. It might not have seemed like much to you, but with just us two and no one else being there, it was something very special for me. It was it was not just some public spectacle like the summer festival or Reza's arrival, but for the first time in so long, I felt like the moment was about you and me and no one else. For someone in my position, it just made me very happy to have such an extraordinary thing happen to me. Of course, I was very curious to see how much our myths would line up with reality. I was even more overjoyed when you visited me in the library. When you accepted my invitation and came into my home, I was just glad to have you there. It seemed like you wanted to be there and weren't just someone out to use me in some way. I began to feel hope. When I met you in the park, I think the only reason I could tell you everything about myself was because I knew you were going to leave again eventually. And now, after all this, I can hardly believe you're still here with me. Why wouldn't I be? You're just so nice to me, yet even after the time I got to spend with you, it seems that soon I'll have to let you go again. At least I got to know you. It can't be all that bad. Ever since I came here, I've met plenty of lovely people, all of their own relationships, struggles and dreams. I know you think you've been alone here all this time, but don't go back into that kind of thinking when I'm gone. Rather, why don't you take it as an opportunity? Now that we're here, who's to say that you won't be able to find others once I'm gone? I know you're still stuck for a while because of your job, but after that, have you considered a change of scenery? You could move to a different place with all new people and opportunities. Who knows what you might find elsewhere? A completely new start? I like that idea, but enough about me. Oh, don't skip ahead. 
What will you do once you get back to your own world again? I'm not sure. I don't even know what will happen to me when I return. These last few days, a lot of things have happened that have changed my perspective on what I'm doing here. Reza and those who sent me. Is that a bad thing? I don't know yet. At the very least, though, I can say that I've done what I believed was right. You should be careful with rhetoric like that. What do you mean? That kind of talk makes it very easy to justify any means when it serves the right cause, whatever that might be. The more important thing, it, the more important thing is, have you done anything you might regret? No matter what you think, keep in mind that you may be held accountable for your actions by others or even yourself. Don't just do something because you think it's for the right reasons. Do it when you are aware of the possible consequences as well. You're right. I have no way of knowing what my actions here will amount to once I return. Do you really wish to go back to your own world? If I didn't, I would only serve to strain the relationship we've been trying to build with your people here, which is something that could be elementary for our survival. Besides, I didn't do it for those who reign over the city back home, or those who might have wanted to betray me. Let's not forget that even under the worst regimes, are just normal people trying to survive too. If I have the power to make a difference for them, would it be right for me to just leave them be in order to seek my own happiness? That's exactly the kind of thing you were talking about, right? In the end, we all have to make our own decisions. If I leave them behind, and I leave them to people like Reza and those who sent me here, what would you want to do? Overthrow them? I don't even have the complete picture myself right now. How can I even consider what to do, given what I know? What I do know, though, is that if I could, if I don't do it, yeah, if I don't do what they expect of me, there will be consequences. Maybe you'll just have to wait and see. That's not an option right now. Reza is still out there, armed and dangerous. Don't you think that's a matter better left for our police force? It could be very dangerous for you to interfere. It's far too late to reconsider. I've already been tangled up in this too much. Besides, I can't stop now. Don't forget how many he has killed already. He won't hesitate to do so again in order to reach his goal. In the end, it's my duty to stop him. If I don't, how would your people look at humanity? How could I face you again knowing that my negligence could cause suffering and loss for others here if I just stop now? I wish I could be as brave as you. Don't think bravery has anything to do with it. He must be stopped one way or another. I know. Just be careful, alright? I'll try. We've been here for a while now. How about I walk you back to your apartment? What about the festival? Well, if you still want to go, we could watch the big fireworks show together in a few days. That's an idea. Alright, let's do that. I watched Remy as he got up again, stretching himself in a way that reminded me of a cat before we prepared to leave again. Oh, you're still here. How's business? As expected, people always get hungry at these events eventually. Can I offer you some more meatballs? No thanks, I'm quite full for my earlier helping. How about you, Anna? A tempting offer, but we're just about to call it a day. I see. Are you going to watch the big fireworks at the end of the festival? That's the plan. Be sure not to miss it. You haven't seen anything until you see the fireworks. That's what everyone keeps telling me. Everyone! One person's told me that. Remy's told me that. And he's a nerd. Because it's true. Because it's true. Anyway, we should probably get going. Have a good day then. You too. And here we are again. Indeed. Did you want to clean out my bathroom cabinet as well as something? <laughs> That's a good one. He gave a big sigh. You know how I feel. I guess I just wanted to make the most of this day. Speaking of which, I've never actually seen you without your tie. Well, actually... <gasps> He's undressing! How about that? You're pretty cute, you know that. <gasps> We're flirting! Is that just a term of a demon? Are you actually serious? I am serious. He looked at me, he looked at me, hesitating, and he took a step forward, his head slowly moving closer to my own. This is basically it, guys! It's time to fuck that dragon. Are we ready? Are we ready for this commitment, guys? Th this is a lot. Jeff standing over, sitting over here, acting like this isn't what he wanted all along. We met, and my arms enveloped his neck as our lips touched. For a few seconds, we were closer than ever before. During the kiss, he used a lot more tongue than I expected. 
Akbar is needs more practice, basically. Just after we parted, he finished by giving me a small lick on the cheek. How was that? Unique, that's for sure. Maybe I shouldn't wear the tie anymore, if this is what happens when I take it off. Actually, I think you should keep it. Really? Yeah, it looks good on you. Well, if you say so. Anyway, it's getting really late, so I should probably get going now. Don't forget about the fireworks. Oh, for sure. I'll see you then. Until we meet again. Thank you for everything. We didn't get any sexy, sexy time with Remy. Another three day. Yay, me! In the end, I decided to spend the day relaxing in my apartment. I didn't know when things would start to pick up again, so I figured it would be better to get some rest as long as I, could, I still could. He used tongue. He did. He used too much tongue. After a night of turbulent dreams, my consciousness returned to the shores of the waking world. Today's the day of the big fireworks. Who shall I bring? Well, obviously Remy. Uh Chapter 5, we pregnant yet. Yeah. <laughs> you can find so that's some sort of stuff. Wow. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure Sean probably knows of it. Ask Sean when he comes back. It must be him. Are you ready to see the fireworks? My body is ready. All right, let's go. Not those kind of fireworks, Remy. My body is ready for your fireworks. I don't need to ask. It's, Sean is a Dragon Dong expert. Sean knows all about Dragon Dongs. He knows all about Dragon Condoms. You know, he knows it. He is a scaly. Never too much tongue. After a few minutes of walking, we arrived at a rather empty looking area near the edge of town. Looks deserted to me. I thought everyone was watching the fireworks. They are, but they're doing it somewhere else. I don't really like the crowds, and I think you would appreciate me leading you here if you knew what they were like. Better be safe than sorry at any rate. That's what I'm thinking. This reminds me a bit of the night I arrived here. Everything was dark and empty, and it was just us walking through the landscape. Yeah, you're right. Oh, I think it's starting now. Watch. We were, we were quiet as we waited, and the stillness of the night enveloped us. Soon I heard the sound of the first rocket making its way into the night sky, after which it exploded in a pattern of colours. Us. My body is ready, trackbar. <laughs> You're so scary, that's why you got my stream in, in recommend. Nice! I'm happy that's how you found me. More rockets followed, their thunderous noise echoing throughout the land. That's pretty. Pretty. Suddenly, a terrible realisation hit me. Considering how public of an event this was, and how I was told multiple times that everyone would be watching the fireworks, now would be the best time for Reza to do anything he planned to do. Not only was the village basically deserted, but the sounds of the fire could also overshadow any gunshots, giving him as much security as he would ever have. As the port had been repaired by the mysterious person I met, now was the perfect time for Reza to make his getaway, and I was the only one who knew. Remy, I think we need to go, now. What is wrong, Anna? I know where Reza is. We need to stop him. Shouldn't we call the police or something? We don't have the time. I'm not sure if I could fight him. You're right. If you're there, he probably won't hesitate to shoot. Maybe you can hold him off and I'll try to get some help. Alright, let's do that. Go. I started running as Remy's voice called out to me. Where is he? Where should I go? The portal. He'll be there. Is Akbar actually a scaly? I don't know. We'll have to ask him if he shows up today. I arrived at the portal just a few minutes later. I couldn't help but be glad that it was still turned off and didn't appear to have been used recently, but it meant Reza was still here somewhere. I looked around, thinking about where he could be, or if it was worth waiting for him here when I saw something out of the corner of my eye. Hesitating, I drew nearer. 
Oh no. Well, Papa Pacos is gonna be happy. Sebastian is dead. I will. Don't don't you worry. I, I am not afraid to ask people these things, especially my mods. I checked Sebastian for any signs of life and found nothing. However, his body was still warm. Reza was here very recently, but he hadn't used the portal just yet. Why? Sebastian's guard post was not just for the portal itself, but also the surrounding area. Since Reza was already here, he probably had some unfinished business very close by. The underground building, the administrator told me all about the prowess of the generators within. It probably hadn't been hard for Reza to guess the same, or to try to steal them from a place he knew would be even more deserted than the rest of the village was right now. He also didn't have far to go from the portal. All things considered, it was the only option that made sense to me. I could have waited for Reza here, but in the end I decided it would be better to meet him underground. If there was going to be a confrontation, I was sure I would have the advantage in a more crowded space. Even in the darkness, it was easy for me to spot the site where they had unearthed the building's entry, as it was in a roped-off area that, had seen, had, that I had seen from afar before. When I entered the building, I was met by a long, illuminated hallway that was lined with doors on both sides. Since the lights were already on, Reza had to be very close. I wasn't surprised at the building... I wasn't surprised at the building still having electricity since its generators were also powering the portal. Suddenly one of the doors opened and out came Reza carrying a large cardboard box. When he spotted me, he set it on the ground. Anna, you're here. You don't know how glad I am to see you. I've wanted to talk with you for so long. I even tried to con contact you, but I couldn't without... I couldn't with someone tailing you the whole time. But talking can wait. Now that you're here, we've got everything. Come on, help me with this and let's get out of here. No. No? What are you talking about? I'm not doing anything until you answer a few questions. You want to talk now? Sure, why not? We've probably got a few hours if we wanted to. None of them will disturb us here. We could even get the backup generator as well after we send this one over. When did you realise we were in the past? How did you know about the comet? I've known for a while. It's why I wanted to talk with you about when we met at the pool. How about you? I only recently found out. Looking back, it just seems so obvious to me now. I'm not sure how exactly you figured it out, but there's so many damn clues when you think about it. I mean, how could, I, could a supposedly completely different, independent civilization speak the same language as us? What was this supposed to be? An alternate reality? No, it, just, it was just a different time. When was there ever anything resembling these creatures on Earth? It's not hard to make the jump from dragons to dinosaurs when some of them here look pretty damn near identical to the dinosaurs we know about. And then there was also the prehistoric fruits, the plants, and the fact that their technology, technological level was nearly exactly the same as our own past society. But we don't even have to think of that abstract. You just need to look at the sky. The sun, the moon, even the stars are the same. Constellations change over time, of course, but you know we can ca could account for that stuff. You could have just pointed your PDA at the sky and it would have told you the time period, including the imminent threat of being eradicated. You could even see the meteorite in the sky and how it would change its position day after day. Are you done being condescending? I guess so. You killed those dragons, Reza. What a brilliant deduction, Sherlock. Why did you do it? Do you really need me to spe spell it out? I thought better of you. After I found out the truth about this place, I knew just waiting for the generators we were owed was not an option anymore. It would have taken who knows how long, but I didn't, didn't intend to stay a day longer than necessary. You wouldn't believe how hard it was for me to acquire some generators. Some of the dragons didn't go down easily. But who cares that they got back the generators I stole? With just this one, we won't need any of the others. How could you do this? How could I do this? Let me ask you this. What harm is there really in taking the generators when the whole civilization will be gone in a few weeks anyway? The ones I killed just died a little earlier than scheduled. Even if that creep hadn't shown up and interrupted our meeting, we wouldn't have had the time for them to make the generators for us. How about we don't let them all die? They aren't going to be extinct anytime soon, if that's what you're concerned about. I paid the hatchery another visit before I came here. With the right 
persuasion. I think we'll have plenty of reasons to keep at least some of them around. Bodyguards, border patrols, weapons, even as pets or companions, as long as we make the necessary changes. See, it's not as bad as you might think. I'm not going to just abandon them like that, only for the whole civilization to be wiped out. Get your priorities straight, Anna. Next, you'd rather starve because you suddenly emphasize with a stake, and you're not satisfied just starving by yourself. No, you're going to let all of us starve because you want to impose your morals on everyone. Since when do you think that you get to have any say in this? You know why you're here. What you're, say what you're proposing is treason, treason, and you know the consequences. Personally, I don't mind if you want to stay here. You know I don't care about corporal punishment. Just let me through and you can do whatever you wish. I can't do that, Reza. I see how it is. They've told you they need this generator to stop the comment, huh? And, how and now you've become their lackey. Don't tell me you've been drinking up what they've been telling you. You know they have as much as of a vested interest in this whole thing as humanity does. That I and you, that I and you do, or at least used to. Do you think they wouldn't do the same thing if it was their families on the line instead of ours? Their entire world is on the line here. They live in perfect harmony with their perfect green energy source and no reason for wars or conflicts, yada yada yada. We had that too, and you know what happened then. Of course you do. This is such an idiotic trope, you know. Random person meets weird natives, learns their ways, and then ends up saving them. What do you need you what do they need you for, huh? Maybe they're gonna be extinct for a reason if they can't even save themselves. You know our suffering, yet yet we'll let them have it. I don't care what happens to them, but unlike you, I was at least trying to save humanity at any cost. We have the solution right here, and you want to get philosophical now. Don't you think we deserve it? They've had it for who knows how long. Now it's time for us. Not like this. Do you think I like it? If there was a different way, I wouldn't have spent the last few weeks doing what you didn't. We don't live in this fairy tale world of yours where there's a per perfect solution to everything. You should know that. Just being here for a few weeks must have messed you up. I think I know why. You got too used to all the comforts they have here. You actually don't care if they all die back then, do you? As long as you can stay here in this perfect little world of yours, you have discarded everything and everyone back home and replaced it with us. With this. Maybe it is because you just don't have a life back home. I can even understand that a little, that little, of course it would be nice to just stay here where they have everything that we don't, but being here also reminded me of everything I hated about our world as it used to be. The pettiness and the politics, say about the solar affair what you want, but it leveled the playing field and gave people like us a chance to make a difference. For all of our efforts, what did we get? A vote that was meaningless and a sea of stupidity and lies. Now everyone has to pull their own way, we make the rules. You of all people should understand. Of course they wouldn't. They haven't experienced how it is to live like we do now, to see the world burn and everyone you know die around you. And because I have, I won't let the same thing happen to them. How many do you think died back home just in the two weeks you've been here because we don't have power for the hospital, huh? Do you think those victims aren't worth mentioning or do you just care about the few dragons I killed? I see you as the last bastion of civilized society in a world where nothing else is left. Maybe you've forgotten about them, but I haven't. How many of us do you think will still be there in a month, a year? Are they just a statistic to you? The same could be said for the dragons. What do you want to do? Talk me down from doing this? And then what? It's too late anyway. You think you're just going to let us go after what I've done? Fat chance. Whatever you may think, you'll find that our leaders back home agree with my course of action. Why are you telling me this? Because I expect you to join me. That's not going to happen. And you call yourself an ambassador. This generator is the only thing we need for our, our city to survive. How can you even argue about this? The dragons also need that generator. And I'll do what is necessary to stop you if I have to. So that makes you judge you an executioner. What a wonderful set of morals you have there, Anna. We only need to wait until the comet has passed safely. You think you could stop the comet? Then you need this generator to do that. Sure, and if your plan fails, then not only is this world gone, but we also lose any and all hope to save our world, our own. We are so close now, we can't risk anything by waiting for your crazy plan when back home they are dying by the minute. I will not let you. You only want to save your own two-faced hide because you don't want to face the consequences of what you did. Yeah, we got him. We got him, guys. We got him. Ugh. Maniacal laughing. 
Why are you laughing about this? Because it's a joke. It must be. I'm the one with the gun and you thought you could just waltz in here and lecture me. Listen to you. Listening to you was fun and all, but the grown-ups must get back to work now. I mean, what are you going to do? You can't stop me now anyway. Maybe I can. Suddenly, Maverick and Remy appeared next to me. Oh no, Remy! He shouldn't have come! You're going to get shot! You planned this, didn't you, Anna? Traitor. And to think I let you distract me with such a cheap trick, just because I thought there was still a shred of humanity within you. He pulled out his gun, not sure which one of us he should be aiming at. Just let me go and I'll forget this thing ever happened. You've got six bodies for three people. Do you think you can really do that, Reza? Do you think that this is worth risking your life for? I've been risking my life for this every day for the last two weeks. What did you do during that time? Sip champagne in your nice apartment? Besides, this generator and the whole building came from our time. They belong to humanity. To humanity. Suddenly, the administrator came out of the shadows in the hallway behind Reza. No, they belong to me. Confused, Reza spun around, aiming his gun at the newcomer who was slowly walking towards him. Who the fuck are you? Freeze. I said freeze. Wanna waste your bullets on me? Feel free. You can't stop all of us. If you say so. He pulled the trigger and an administrator fell to the ground with a dull thud that knocked a mask off. Mortified by the display before me, I found myself unable to move as the events of the following seconds unfolded before my eyes. Reza was quick with his gun and shot Remy once before Maverick could charge him. Maverick pounced, snarling and knocked Reza to the ground before embedding his teeth into the body before him. Despite his thrashing and screaming, Reza managed to find his target and pulled the trigger twice. Immediately, the jaws dislodged. Reza pulled himself a few feet away while Maverick's body convulsed uncontrollably. Holding his bleeding wound and breathing heavily, Reza looked at me. You're not going to help me, are you? Then it is futile. He raised his gun, aiming at me while I regained my composure and tried to run. A single gunshot resounded through the hallway and as soon as I heard it, a sharp pain shot through my back. I fell to the ground immediately. He continued pulling the trigger, but no more bullets came. After a few seconds of silence, I slowly turned around. Reza was leaning against the wall, his head slumped forward lifelessly. Maverick and the administrator both lay in a pool of their own blood, were not moving. I crawled over to Remy and was glad to hear him breathing. He had been hit in the side and I saw blood trickling from the wound onto the ground below him. He raised his head, looking at me with an expression of pain. You're wounded. So are you. We need to stop the bleeding. I pushed some pressure on his wound, momentarily halting the blood that was trickling down his body. Can you do this? Let me try. He fell around his side, trying to get the right grip before he applied pressure on his own. I let go, and after a bit of adjustment, Remy could stop the bleeding on his own for now. I took off my shirt and briefly considered whether I would be able to use it to dress Remy's wound but I soon realised it was not long enough to wrap around him properly. Besides, if he couldn't walk for now, it would not make a difference anyway, and he would have to stay here while he held his wound shut. Instead, I used the shirt to carve my own bleeding, folding it and wrapping it around my abdomen tightly. Look, Reza is gone and that other person. Remy was right, both Reza and the administrator were gone. You have to go, go and stop Reza. I need to find you some help first, I can't just leave you like this. Don't you dare tell me you would be doing me any favours by saving me. If it's just going to be one of us, I don't want it to be me. You don't know how it is to live every day as I have, always wondering if the pain will ever stop or if things will ever change again. And when they finally do, you come along and tell me this? Don't do that to me. I'm not going through this again. What do you want me to do? This is bigger than us, bigger than me. Just go. Go and stop Reza. Alright. I hobbled to my feet and made my way back outside, just in time to see Reza vanishing through the portal. I made my way back to Remy to look for something to treat his wound. Given everything that had just transpired, I had no idea what was going to happen. I also wondered where the administrator had gone. I checked a few of the rooms and even found a first aid kit that I used to treat both of us. Soon, however, I heard steps behind me. As I turned around, I was surprised to see another human face. It was a soldier. 
Who are you? What are you doing here? I asked him. We're here to save you. Reza told us everything, he replied. I didn't know what Reza had told them, but I certainly didn't want to leave just yet. I tried to protest and told them about Remy, and the soldier let me know that they would take care of it. For now, however, their orders were clear, and I was to come with them immediately. Another soldier arrived and took the generator with him. Then they escorted me back through the portal. After all this time, I wondered what would happen now to our world and the dragons. I arrived on the other side, only to be met by a team of EMTs who were already expecting me. I was urged to lay down in a cart, which was quickly transported into the back of an ambulance. They took off my bandages and examined my wounds as I heard them calling out medical terms I didn't understand. A breathing mask was put on me and soon I lost consciousness. I wasn't sure what exactly Reza had told them, but with him dead and me wounded, humanity decided to take what they thought was theirs by force, which included the underground building itself. Hoping for a diplomatic solution, the dragons retreated and borders were established all within a matter of days. The thousands of people living in our city were quickly relocated. For, for them, it was a better solution than any other. Here, they had, already, they had an already working infrastructure, buildings, and things looked just like they used to. When I woke from my induced coma, it was with the expected dose of confusion as I had to realise the place was deserted and it hadn't been just a building, it was the entire city, everyone was gone. Whatever Reza had told humanity had been enough for them to ultimately decide to leave me behind as a traitor while they sought out their promised land. To their credit, they could have killed me, but just leaving me behind and to my own devices was exactly the kind of punishment I would expect from them. I wasn't even sure how much time had passed since I returned. When they had permanently disabled a portal, I was at least able to find plenty of supplies they had left behind as I roamed the city to make a new life for myself. After a few days of checking building after building and getting to know my new surroundings, I was surprised to see a shadow flying overhead. It was a dragon. Hey. Blinded by the sun, I couldn't quite make out the dragon before it landed and approached. It was Remy. Remy, what are you doing here? I've been looking for you for the last few days. Honestly, I wasn't sure that I was going to find you at all. I don't even know how long it's been since I last saw you. It must have been a few weeks. Why did you come here? We need you. You have to tell them what really happened, what Reza did and everything else. After you went back, the soldiers found me and I was interrogated. When they were negotiating with our council, they realised that Reza's account of what happened here differed a lot from what really went down. Of course, there were a lot of blanks they needed to fill in, too. They needed to find someone who was willing to go back to find you, so I did. Besides, I owed it to, I owed it to you for everything you've done for me. Remy, I guess they realised the error they made by leaving you behind, but now all of us need you as a witness. You must tell them the truth. How is your wound? It's fine. I was patched up pretty well, all things considered. Come on, we've got no time to lose. The port was just around the corner, but how are we going to get back? They deactivated it. I know, that's why they gave me something to repair it. Let's go then. A few minutes later, we arrived at the portal. I thought about alternative options, considering we would be able to use it now. Time travel came to my mind, and while I knew about the port's capabilities to do so, I had no idea how. Either way, I would do what I could to make things right. I watched as Remy reactivated the portal using its interface with his somewhat clumsy paws. Something's not right here. I it can't find the other portal. A terrible realization hit me as I considered, as I considered, hope for other possibilities. You said it was a few weeks since I last saw you, right? And you've been looking for me for how long? A week? Yes. Remy, I think I've got some very bad news. What is it? Suddenly, I heard someone approaching us from behind, and after I turned around, it was the administrator who stood before us. I have finally found you. Come on, we need to go back. Back? They're all gone. What are you talking about? In the time you were he here, the meteorite you knew about collided with Earth. The civilization you knew and the human settlement are no more. What? How? Reza knew this was going to happen. How ironic that Reza would drag himself through the portal in his gravely injured state to try and save humanity by telling them about the generator, you and the meteorite, only to, only to fall on deaf ears about the last crucial part. Now they are all gone. I wasn't talking about returning to them, however, but going back to a time even before that, the day of your arrival. You want to use the portal for time travel? I knew about the possibilities, but doing it for real, fascinating. Can Remy come with us? No, it is complicated enough as it is. 
and I don't want to go. I don't think you realise what is at stake here. All the others you have met are dead. The whole civilization was wiped out in one fell swoop and the world lies in ashes. Only we can go back and try to prevent this from ever happening. But it's alright Anna, just go. You have to save them. This is my utmost goal. Alright, I'll do it. Very well, take your position please. I stood in the middle of the portal and after pressing a few buttons, the administrator joined me. What shall I? What should I call you? She looked at me with a mild expression of bewilderment. Now that you don't wear the mask anymore, we can do without the code name. You can call me Izumi. I could see the faintest hint of a smirk. Now, that, not that it matters much. Once we arrive on the other side, you probably won't remember a thing. As I heard the familiar sound of the portal starting up, the last thing I saw was Remy watching us as he slowly entered his tie and slipped it off his neck. Sad times, but we completed it. Twenty two and the more innings to go. It's one of many bad endings, yes. They're not joking that there is like 20 odd endings. You didn't like that. feeling I got that one before. I must have completed this game twice then because I have a feeling I've got that one before. doing this to be honest I remember my first playthrough my first playthrough was with um, Bryce I got some of that Bryce dick in my first playthrough But yeah. Oh, you can see him in gallery. Only the good ones. Fuck, I've only got bad ones. <laughs> Maybe I want to see the bad ones. I'm proud of the fact that I'm constantly getting dragons killed. Obviously. It's so sad. Well, we can try, like, I can get a guide up and we can go for a good, 
one. Oh, what? These were good endings with these two, was it? I didn't even see him. Yeah, we decided not to do the ice cream this time around. But well, we decided not to do it. I've already done it. Who the fuck is he? I don't even remember him. Well, that's pretty cool, knowing that. Boo, boo, boo. But yeah, this is where we'll end this fold anyway. That's the game. Played through again. Apparently, I've just done exactly the same thing I did last time I played it, probably. Um, I'm going to talk to the chat and see if they want to do it again and try to get a good ending. But yeah, that's it for this VOD.